and Recording welcome you in all. progress. I, I'm Michael Sherman, a member of the committee, uh, and I am pinch hitting for our chair who was somewhere in the air between where she was and where she's coming back to, uh, and, and regrets that she's not able to, to be here. Um, so the other members of our committee are Jeremy Beaudry, um, Cameron Nate Niedermeyer, um, who is the uh, assistant city manager and, and, and keeps us all in line and helps us get our work done. Uh, Lauren Hurl, who is a member of the city council, Helen Cohn, um, um, and that's it, right? Did I leave anybody out? Okay. Um, so those of you who are our guests, thank you very much for coming. And if you would briefly introduce yourself and just say who you are and what committee you uh, are on, um, we can sort of get get a sense of who, who's here doing what. So, uh, John, will you start? You're, you're, I'm going to do this on my screen. John. I'd be happy to. I'm John Snell. I'm chairman of the tree board in Montpelier. Thank you. Tom Cohn. You're, you're muted, Tom. Not yet. No, not yet. There you go. Did that work? Yes, that did it. Sorry about that. So um, I'm Tom McCone. I'm not on any committees, but I'm writing an article about the policy for the bridge. So that's why I'm here. All right, thank you. Um, my sequin says Amy Gamble, but- um, Yeah. I'm Amy Gamble. I'm the chair of the Energy Advisory Committee. Thank you. And um, Monica? Hello. Uh, I'm on uh, the um, Montpelier Public Arts Commission. And I'm not the chair, but the chair couldn't be here, so I'm sitting in. Okay. All right. Um, so the next thing, if, um, if we could have the, the, the agenda up on the screen, or the, who's doing that? Are you able to give me permission, Cameron? Yes, you should now have it. Yes. Okay. Okay. So here's what we're going to we're going to be doing, um, and just move through this. Um, um, Sorry, having some <laughs> issues. Um, all right, what can you guys see? I know it's like the weird format right now, but can you see okay. it? Okay? Yep. Okay. okay. I think this way I can actually mute and unmute and stuff. Otherwise, <laughs> if I do the full screen, it's screwing up that. So, Michael, is this you? Oh, you're muted, Michael. Okay, can you hear me now? Yep. Okay. Um, so let's go to the overview of, um, of CJAC. How do I do that? You're going to do that. Um, Great photo. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, I took that. <laughs> good, good. Um, <laughs> this committee was formed in 2018 to, as you see, to assist the city in reshaping the systems, policies, and practices that perpetuate barriers to social and economic justice. Its name is the Montpelier City of Montpelier Social Economic Justice Committee. CJAC is easier to say quickly, and so that's how we refer to ourselves. Um, and uh, I've introduced uh, we introduced members, and I would like to start by saying that we we have room for a lot more members. And if you know anybody or you yourself are interested in joining, please um, contact Shana um, for any more information. And there's also, um, you can contact her through the, the city website. We have a web page there. So in, in, uh, in 2019, we received funding through the council to hire a creative discourse to conduct a preliminary equity assessment for the city. Um, holding foot and they conducted um, focus groups with community leaders, various affinity groups, um, and had, and then designed 
online equity survey, some of which was distributed by hand to by some of us on the committee and to various communities and, uh, and constituencies. Um, and that included people not only living in Montpelier, but also people who work here and or visit here on a regular basis. The results of that were presented to the city um, council on August 18th. And if you would like to see that um, presentation, you can go over to the city website and I welcome to, sort of, to see how they presented it. Can I have the next slide, slide please? The, probably the overarching question that, um, that the, the, the consultants pose is how do you, do you have a sense of belonging to the city? I mean, what, what, what does that mean? Well, it turns out it means, you know, feeling that uh, you have a voice that's heard both in, 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 uh, in the city council and in, in various other areas, for example, committees, um, that people feel that the city uh, under, is acknowledging um, who they are and, and trying to serve their needs, their specific needs, as well as the general needs of everybody in the city. And what you see here is a breakdown um, that, they, that uh, they found from their results. So 68% of white folks feel uh, that they have a sense of belonging, 39% of, of the BIPOC, uh, that's uh, Black, Indigenous, people of color. 69% um, for heterosexual uh, as a, uh, versus 45% for the LGBTQ plus, 64% with a college degree and 46% without, um, without, without a college degree. Uh, that, that actually, there's more to that story. That is uh, the college degree People um, greatly outnumber them. Uh, the the, uh, the the number of people, uh, not outnumber, but it's a high percentage of, of 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 people in the population generally, and in Montpelier and in the state as a whole. So the next slide, please. I see there's a question from Tom, Michael. Sorry, yes, Tom. Let's go ahead, Tom. Tom, can you hear me? I can't hear well. Oh, is it is it just me, or is it um? Can can other people hear all right? Yep. Yeah, I'm sorry. We can you? Is there a way you can turn your speakers up? That might or headphones might be helpful. Okay, I'll I'll take care of it. I just wanted to know if it was a an issue for everybody or just for me. I'll I'll deal with it. Thank you. Okay. All right. So the, in response to those, in response and as a result of those meetings, the, um, the, the, uh, the consultants uh, presented a series of questions, a series of recommendations, and, and they divided them into three sections. And the first section, as you see here, is operational. And the, the suggestion, what recommendation was that we publicize and create accommodations for people with disabilities at meetings and make the format more accessible. Improve the website and offer content that is easy to translate online or is in multiple languages. We have made some uh, gains in that we're starting and I understand the city is doing a major overhaul of the, the website. Isn't that the case, Cameron? Yeah, okay. Um, and we're still working on some of the other parts of that, of, of that with the city, city administration. Uh, conduct implicit bias and anti-racism training for staff, including police. Uh, that too has been initiated. And um, I should say that at the same time that this was going on, there was a police review committee. And uh, we, uh, I would served on that committee and we shared our information with the, the CJAC consultants, the CJAC consultants shared their information with the police review. Um, Laurel was also on that committee. And so I think we covered that, that part um, pretty carefully. And, and um, we, 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 there are a lot of changes taking place. And a lot of what was recommended has already been initiated. Um, and the, the fourth in the operational section is keeping, keep Zoom or remote participation component of meetings even after in-person meetings resume, add closed captioning in multiple languages. 
Well, as you see, we are keeping Zoom going. Um, I don't know about where we are with closed caption and multiple language. Um, we have made some in initial discussion, had some initial discussions about that in our committee. Uh, and um, I think we're waiting to hear more from the city. Next, please. The second area is relational. Communicate more about available supports and services and target the outreach so that it gets to understand to underserved populations. Um, receive acknowledgement of communication when reaching out to city councilors. Uh, um, find more ways to ask people what they need, outreach surveys, community polls, etc. Um, I think the city is talking about doing a new survey soon. Is that right? Um, so we'll get information. Um, and then, and I suppose there will be some reshaping of, some, of the questions or some, as well as some consistency so that there is a, there is a way of comparing previous years to, to what we get this time. Um, have, have police get out of vehicles and be more approachable on foot. Uh, again, this is one of the things that came up both in, in two, both committees and I know that uh, Chief Pete um, is working on this and has actually um, a, a designated one member of the police force to be a community outreach person. So I think we're seeing we're seeing more of the police on the street, um, uh, and uh, and that that was partly a response to this this recommendation. Michael, you... I thought John had his hand up. Oh, I'm sorry. A quick comment that. Uh, people at the farmer's market have really appreciated the fact that almost every week a couple of the policemen or police people show up and uh, wander around and they're very much appreciated. Thank you I think for that. Um, I'm just reading so I'm not paying attention to what's going on anywhere else. So that's good to have someone sort of say, hey, question out here. Thank you. Uh, and then finally, in this se section, decrease interactions with people from marginalized communities who may have a fear response triggered by police presence. Um, and I don't know how that's working at this point, but um, I, I think it is, um, it is something on, on the chief's agenda for sure. Next, and then the, the third, Section is structural, as you see, address housing issues and, dis and discrimination toward people who experience homelessness, uh, revise ethics policy and review all pol policies through an equity lens, rethink policing in Montpelier, suggestions include decreasing armed police presence, disarming, defunding or abolishing the police. Um, I haven't heard any talk much about de uh, defunding or abolishing, but I have heard a lot about what the police department is doing to try to make itself more in touch with the community and in a, a positive in a positive way. Um, I mean, they're working on it. <laughs> Create a mental health crisis response team and offer alternative support via dispatch. I believe in the, the current budget, there is uh, we're making some progress on that. And there is, there will be more uh, mental health responders um, working on the ground. Develop and articulate an ongoing equity plan and vision for Montpelier. This is basically keeping keeping at it. Uh, that our our work isn't done. Uh, our committee recognizes that the work is just starting, uh, but um, it's certainly it's certainly the. City Council has also acknowledged that uh, this has to be going on, and so um, they're, they're, we have gotten funding for the next the next stages. Um, I think that's it for what we have accomplished so far. So here's what's on our agenda, and we have started taking uh, our, devoting our meetings to discussing one or another of these issues as we go along. Uh, limit outreach limited to English proficiency households and develop a language access plan. Uh, we made some preliminary stabs at this, just trying to get a sense of how many languages we should be acknowledge, you know, acknowledging in, in the sense of uh, trying to get assistance uh, with that and, 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 and how many languages uh, should we be recommending that the city um, use when they issue uh, documents. Make the website more accessible, 
um, again, uh, that's in progress. Create a restorative pro community harm and trust building with the police department and LEOs, um, social worker, peer support outreach workers and community resource officer on staff, public safety ordinance review schedule. And again, I think the, the, the Chief Pete has uh, started working on a new policy for a crisis um, communi communication after a crisis. Offer stipends to residents of boards and commissions to support childcare, income replacement, access to transportation, other barriers to volunteer participation in involved city processes. And Lauren will talk about a, a, a project that the committee has planned and uh, has been approved by the city council. Um, so I will now, I, I think that does it. Are there any other questions? Um, okay, well, I will let Lauren take over from here and talk about the stipends project. Great, and I see Jeremy has his hand up, so maybe something to add. I didn't see that, okay. That's okay, um, thanks, Michael. I, I did wanna just add one detail about the creative discourse equity assessment and report. Um, if I remember correctly, there were basically two categories of recommendations. Um, one bucket of recommendations included suggestions and ideas that we heard from the community as things that they would like to see um, addressed um, and put into place around equity. And there was another set of recommendations that were more specifically from creative discourse themselves as kind of with their expertise in this area. Um, and so as you look back at those recommendations that we just reviewed, I believe that was a, a mix of both creative discourse recommendations and community member suggestions. And please confirm that if I'm, or disconfirm that, but I think that's. No, that's correct. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Jeremy. Great, so one of the um, projects that we're working on um, that we particularly wanted to get together with the heads of the committees was talking about stipends for um, committee members and participation in committees. And so this was one, as Michael highlighted, this was one of the like specific recommendations that came from the process and, um, and was part of the equity assessment for the city. And it was really looking at you know, this sense of who's participating in city government, who has access to it, who feels like they are welcome and included and just have the ability to actually participate. And so, um, you know, offering stipends is something that um, more and more communities are looking at. Um, Essex in particular has been somewhere we've been learning from because they're they've been going down this road a little bit ahead of us. So we've been able to learn from some of their uh, kind of lessons learned as they're trying to actually roll this out in their community. Um, it's something that the state offers stipends for many committees. And there's been a big conversation uh, in the legislature about increasing stipends or how are we offering stipends to really make it um, something that it's both enticing and is just accessible for people. So thinking of someone who might need to line up and pay for childcare or pay for transportation or forego wages because um, of the time commitment and doing the work for the city. So are we really making this something that um, we're getting more voices into the process um, and hearing from you know a variety of people with different lived experiences who could really bring a breadth of perspectives to our city um, processes and committees, and we all benefit from having that just broader perspective and participation. Um, so the city council on uh, CJAC's recommendation decided to move forward um, as part of the budget, which was approved uh, for to set aside $30,000 for fiscal year 23. So starting July 1, 2022, um, stipends will be available um, for all people appointed to city committees and you're able to um, access $50 per person per meeting. Um, it's a set pot of money and, and so it's going to be, you know, rolling out and 
essentially if the money runs out, the money will run out. And we're really looking at this um, as a pilot project. And so really wanting to learn how is this going? Are, is the process set up? Is it really um, something that is increasing uh, participation and uh, bringing in new perspectives to city uh, government and to our city committees. Um, so I think the ability to all work together and learn from this and take in uh, both the input from the various committees and how it's going and um, you know being able to assess that. Um, oops, having a lot of sensitive <laughs> computers today. Um, so it, there's a process and a, a policy for how you can register. So it's something that is going to be available when you, you know, apply to be appointed. Um, it, that information will become available and is something that we would ask as committee chairs or as um, people on behalf of your committee that we let people know that this is going to be available um, as of July 1st. And then you have to fill out some paperwork. And as soon as you've gone through that, then you can start accessing it. Um, the thing we're going to ask of uh, committee chairs is tracking attendance um, because it's you get it for every meeting you attend um, would be the $50 stipend for people who sign up for this. Um, so that is one thing that's going to be fall on committees to, you know, we already take minutes. Um, so it's, it's um, getting that information to uh, city staff so that we can track that and make sure that people are getting um, the stipends. Um, so I believe that's going to be a monthly kind of tracking system, at least to start. And again, we're going to learn and figure out the best ways and most efficient ways to do all of this. Um, so as I was saying, you know, part of as because this is going to be a pilot program, we really want to learn about how how this is working. Is this um, you know, succeeding? Is it accomplishing what we hope in terms of making participation in city committees more accessible to more people? Um, so one of the tools that we want to use and uh, we'll be looking for help from the various committees is um, we have a brief survey that we want to um, have every committee uh, take so that we can understand who is serving now. And so it's like some broad demographics and just get trying to get a snapshot of who's on the committees so that over time we can see, are we really expanding and broadening the different um, types of people that are participating in city committees. Um, so it's pretty short and sweet, but I think will be really informative for giving us this baseline data that we can then use to assess over time how we're doing at um, expanding membership um, and increasing accessibility. So that's something that we're gonna be looking for your help um, getting the word out. So I think the two pieces is, you know, being able to get the information out about the availability of the stipends, um, and we can, you know, get, it's a pretty simple process, um, but make sure that we get you everything you all need as committee leaders um, to make sure that that's available and understandable. Um, and then doing this uh, survey to understand, you know, who is currently serving are the two main pieces. Um, and, you know, I think paired with both just the availability of the stipends, you know, I think we all collectively also need to think about how we're doing outreach and, you know, how are we reaching new people? How are we letting people know this is available and would very much welcome ideas and thoughts on how we're also just connecting with more parts of our community um, so that people can take advantage of this uh, new program. So I think I will leave it there, but would now welcome input thoughts. This is like, because this is a pilot program, we're very much kind of developing this between now and the rollout in July. Um, so would welcome feedback um, or, you know, of course, happy to answer questions you all might have. And other committee members, feel free to jump in with whatever I missed. Any questions, thoughts, advice? Um. I don't know how to raise my hand. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. I think it's a small enough group that people can just go for it. Yeah. yeah. So um, just a couple questions popped into my mind. And one was, would this only be for regular committee meetings or also for subgroups? That is a great question. I, I believe we've mostly been talking about it as for committee meetings, although 
why don't we bring that back to um, as that's a good question. And my other question was, would this apply to student members as well? I'm seeing Cameron shake her head. <laughs> yeah, that, that to me seems like an easier question to answer. I think we're at a place with this stipend program where we're just asking folks if you believe that you could benefit from this to apply. And the only people that we've currently said can't do that are um, committee members like our city council who already receives financial support for being in that position. So I, I think the a sort of easier answer from uh, uh, policy wise is yes for that question. Yeah, Lauren is right. We might need to go back to the committee and ask about that um, first question. Okay, I'm thinking that might be a, a way to entice our student members to actually attend. Bribe them. <laughs> <laughs> Support them in attending. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, that's a good, I, um, two good questions. Um, yeah, and so we'll have to come up with a policy which we'll let you know about. Is it, you know, any official warned meeting, whether it's a subgroup or the full group or, you know, for the energy committee, for example, between like the policy committee is that you're going to have a lot of meetings add up um, that this time that people are investing. So good questions, Amy. Other questions or input, thoughts, reactions? I'll just say that people keep telling me that we should get stipends and I didn't know this was on the table. So good work. <laughs> <Thank> you. <laughs> that was actually my question to, to turn to some of y'all who are in different committees and ask if, if they have, has this trickled down at all? Did anyone know that this was happening? No. No, I hadn't heard about it. Nope. How, how would we have heard about it? Um, there's been quite a few. So one of the perennial questions that I have for myself is how many people are actually paying attention to our council meetings and then our notes from the council meetings or our weekly reports from the council meetings, that kind of thing. So um, that would be primarily some of the places that this would be found, right? Um, Tom on this call has been a really great advocate for writing about uh, C. Jack's work in the bridge. But if you're not looking at that, I don't know. So that's good to know. That's good feedback for me. Thank you. Yeah, I think, I think Front Porch Forum is a really excellent place to do it. And the Facebook page, the city Facebook page also would be a great way to put that out to people. I think I've read about it when I was looking at the budget stuff for in preparation for town meeting. Could could I ask for clarification on the student issue so that the committee is going to look at um, is going to discuss the issue of subgroup meetings again or, or discuss that and then. It sounds like students are eligible for the stipend. Is that right? Or are you going to discuss that further? I just don't see how they wouldn't be. Right. Okay. I just wanted to confirm that. That's what I thought. Yeah. The exciting thing from, from my point of view is that this opens up possibilities for people to serve who have not been able to to date. And I think it's awesome. Yeah, I mean, just from a personal standpoint, um, I I was sadly thinking about stepping off the committee because I need to work, but it, it's not a lot of compensation, but it, it does build a little bit of incentive to stay on the committee because I like being on the committee. It was more of a practical choice about my life, so... Yeah. I would think it would be a, a quite an attraction for some students because if you have a two hour meeting and you get paid $50, that's $25 an hour. It's, it's better than you get working at stores in town. The biggest conflict on the tree board for the two student members are athletics and a stipend's not going to help there. Right.
Great. Any other input? I don't know, Cameron, if there was any of the process or anything, or if people feel like, you know, we can share the documents of, you know, how you sign up and how that will work and just see if there's questions and happy to, you know, have one of us come to one of your meetings and describe the, the why and the how, if that's helpful. Um, I'm sure you'd be happy to do that or between the city staff liaison and council member and stuff, we would be able to make that happen pretty easily. But. I will send out after this meeting to everyone who was copied on the invite. And um, so hopefully committee chairs will be able to get that to their groups, just all of the draft policies that we have. So I, we could get direct feedback from folks, I think would be really helpful. Um, so basically how this will work is in order to sign up, um, everyone will need to fill out a W-9 form, which is the highest barrier of entry that um, we couldn't get rid of. Um, I recognize that W-9s are um, uh, can be limiting, that could be limiting for some folks. Um, unfortunately, the way uh, uh, the city's system works is that we'd need to do that because after I think you receive $600 from any anybody it you have to that has to be ta it's taxable income so um it's just important that we have that um so it, the stipend registration form is really just give us your name what you serve on a way to contact you and your w-9 form and that is it and then that gets turned into the city manager's office um kept secure there and so what we're asking for committee chairs is basically just keep a separate attendance form that, uh, from your minutes um, that could be cor corroborated with your minutes if needed, but just keep an attendance record and hand that in at the end of the month. Um, or uh, that could be scanned or turned in person, but that basically gives me the, or it will be me, let's, just be honest here, it'll give me the way to track um, who is actually in attendance and then sign up and uh, uh, sign off on um, them going, getting their payment directly from the city. So um, that way you're basically writing everybody's name down. So you're not calling out, you don't need to know, you don't need to like identify who is getting a stipend. You're just writing every single person's name down. And then it's up to me to say, oh, that person's getting a stipend, that person's getting a stipend, and then cutting that check for them so that there's um, some privacy there. People don't have to disclose. And it comes directly to my office to um, take care of getting them their funding. Um, so that's that's really the, the process, trying to make it as low barrier and easy for folks to both utilize and receive as possible. Basically, the program will run until we run out of money. And then we'll, you know, collect the data that Lauren was talking about in the before and after um, survey. Um, and we'll see, we'll see what happens. I, I have a question. Um, so I, I teach for the senior center, and I'm already getting a paycheck from the city for that. Just for example, does that, <laughs> am I in your system now? Because, or would you, I mean, I, it's all coming under the same umbrella. So I would imagine yes. you wouldn't need a, another W-9. Probably not. Um, that would be a case by case basis that we'd work with people on, right? I probably won't need your W-9, but um, that requirement is still on the table. And if you're also asking if that would like it because you teach for this, the senior center would that like disqualify you also no yeah yeah okay. yeah it's all yeah thank you just like to add that the, um, the preliminary survey is really important because it gives us a ground you know, from, from which to start um, assessing the success or not success of this effort to include more people so uh, that's something where committee chairs, I think, are going to have to take some leadership, you know, leadership and urging their committee members to fill out the survey form. What's the timeline on the pre-survey? I don't know. Does, Cameron, do you, does anyone recall? 
Before July. So yeah. yeah. Good. And I would just add, I mean, because this is going to be a, a pilot project and learning. So just, I mean, if you enrolling this out, have any feedback, positive, negative, even like neutral, whatever, just any kind of how it's going. And if you're seeing value, I mean, even, you know, to, to Monica's point, like it might not show up as a change in your committee if you are able to stay on, but that feedback is helpful. And so as city council then is assessing, do we continue this program or not? Just your input from the committees is going to be really crucial to, you know, assessing if it's, you know, worth investing taxpayer dollars in this program in an ongoing way. So just to put a plug in for even if it's just like a quick note to us, like, hey, this is going well, or this is a challenge or whatever, would be super helpful. So just appreciate any, any feedback you have along the way. All right, well, if people, um, obviously, you know where to find us for more questions on that, but I think we're gonna transition now to um, the discussion portion, which Maybe I'll leave these up for a minute, but then we could put these questions into the chat so we can see each other better. Do you want to do that, Jeremy? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, thank you. So um, we did want to get into some more broad discussion on, on how each of your committees kind of connects to these really important um, equity issues that is the focus, sole fo really the sole focus of our committee. Um, and we did have a similar meeting like this um, last year, where we generated some really great discussion among a number of committee members from different committees, um, just to get a sense of the lay of the land, really, on, on how folks in different committees were thinking about um, these uh, equity issues. Um, so we wanted to kind of do another conversation along those lines, um, and we've got a few prompting questions here. Um, the way we, I think I'm going to structure this is I'm going to just read through the questions really quickly um, and then give you each three minutes to just consider them and maybe make some, some notes that we can then use um, to start to, to share some of your thoughts about these. Um, so um, the first question is, you know, and maybe you weren't at that first meeting um, that we held last year, but you know, what what progress do you feel your committee has been making when it comes to any equity issues um, that's within its purview, um, and or um, what challenges or barriers are is your committee facing with respect to some of these equity issues? The second question here is. Um, which equity issues do you feel are, are most rele relevant to what your committee is focused on? Um, and related to that, which equity issues is your committee really actively engaged in already? Um, that would be some really helpful information to have. Um, and then the final question here is kind of a future facing one, um, more of a kind of visioning question. So if, if, you, if you had a magic wand, which equity issue or issues would you and your committee like to most impact for the city of Montpelier? Um, and I'd like you to really think about those issues that are within the purview of your committee. I know there's a lot of things that we're all interested in, but we're, we want you to kind of use your committee lens for this. Um, so I'm hopeful everyone can see those questions on the screen. And Michael, if you could just give us three minutes um, we're going to be awkwardly silent, but you're going to be thinking and making notes and it's going to be worth it. Um, and it looks like we had Shana just joined. So welcome Shana. Um, looking forward to hearing from you in a few minutes too. So um, okay. three minutes. You're on. Thanks, Michael. This might be a really stupid question, but could you just kind of enumerate what the equi different equity issues are mm -hmm. so that we can? Absolutely not a stupid question. Um, so in our, in our committee, we often talk about um, social justice, economic justice, 
and, and racial justice. Um, you could add to that, you know, environmental, um, you could add to that um, kind of, um, you know, uh, ableism, disability rights. Um, so I, I think it's anything where, where we can make Montpelier more equitable for everyone who is in this community. Um, so it, it's a probably a pretty large bucket of things, which is why thinking about your own committee may help you focus on this. Does that help, Amy? Yeah. Okay, thanks. Okay, time's up. Sounds like our timer. Great, thanks, Michael. Um, okay, so what, I, what I'd like to do is um, just, if, if the three of you are, are open to it, just kind of go one by one and, and hear what thoughts you have in response to these three questions. Um, and I'm just gonna pick somebody. Um, John, would you care to kick us off, please? I'd be happy to. Um, the, at the last meeting, it really was, for me, um, just eye-opening uh, to even think in terms of, you know, this sort of process. And um, we thought, thought a lot about it. I've thought a lot about it. We've talked about it on the committee since. And one of the things we realized is that there are places in the city where there are not a lot of trees. They tend to be uh, economically uh, deprived areas. We've made some strides on Berry Street as an example. We planted about 50 trees there over the last four years and they're starting to show up, which is fabulous. Um, there's still more to be done. Um, so, so I think we really are focusing where we will plant trees going forward. We're recipients of a grant uh, that will give us uh, 100 free trees in, um, in June. And people have to sign up for that. So we can't exactly say where they're going to be planted. But uh, today, the uh, CAN program sent mm -hmm. out a notice to District 3, which is one of the underserved areas. Uh, in advance of everybody else finding out about this program. So it's a little bit cheating, but um, <laughs> it was one way we could get the word out uh, in places we want. I also have notified uh, a number of the properties on Berry Street, uh, and I'm going to this week uh, make an attempt to uh, reach out to Cumming Street Apartments and let them know that uh, this is coming, and there's a sign-up date. Uh, they can they can jump on early and and get a tree. Um, really, the the biggest thing I think is that we envision part of our plan is to plant all of the neighborhoods and streets throughout the city. That that's the only way to go in the long run. Um, <clears throat> to, to bring about something that's fair for everyone. And um, we have our work cut out for us, but we're making some progress. Berlin Street was one that we uh, uh, worked on two years ago. And again, the trees now have doubled in size in that time. And one of the efforts there was to try and get trees growing along the road so that traffic would slow down. There's a well-documented direct correlation between trees and, and speed. And uh, the more trees we can have, slower people will go. And Berlin is a painfully obvious place to start. Um, the other thing that we, we have not yet done a lot with, but with the two students we have on our board, is to work more with schools. And that's a place where we can make a big difference across all uh, groups of people. Uh, and there's a lot of work that, that they, we can do with them. Uh, we've, we've done some work with the um, um, uh, Montpelier Youth Conservation Corps, and they'll be, uh, we'll be working with them this summer on several projects. So that's exciting too. That's, I think that's about it. That's great, thank you. It, it's really cool to hear you um, using CAN 
as a way to do outreach. Yeah, that was Alec who suggested that, Alec Ellsworth, which was a great suggestion. And of course, Hanif was wonderful. And um, the last thing is that we, we are, besides these 100 trees, we are moving our nursery out of uh, North Branch Nature Center to the Feast Farm. And we will be able to produce a lot more trees there that are better quality and um, um, just you know, much easier to, to do. Uh, so that's really exciting because that's what we need is more trees. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, before we hear from someone else, does anyone have any specific questions for John um, and some of the work that the tree board is involved with? I have a specific question just because I have a couple of friends that live on Berlin Street and they are going to be really excited about that. And I'd love to tell them about the grant. <laughs> How do we find out about it? Uh, they will they will get a notice from CAN tonight, I believe, or tomorrow. Uh, I think it went out this morning. Oh, like on their like in their mailbox or something? Uh, or? Uh, however, they uh, sign up in their neighborhoods with cans, oh. uh, usually by email. Mm -hmm. um, but I can send you, if you send me your email address, uh, I, can, I can get it. I'll send it to you. Sure, I'll then, send it in the uh, chat. Why don't I do that? Okay. <laughs> Thank you, John. <laughs> You're welcome. Michael. This is a question, John. I know you're on another committee. I think it's the street, the streets committee, the complete streets committee. Is that right? I am no longer on that committee. Oh, okay. Well, I was going to ask if they if they what they were doing, but if you don't want to speak for them, um, we'll try to get. It's been, it's been four months that I'm off, so I okay. can't. Okay, not seeing anything else now. Um, so I'm going to single out Monica because you're already unmuted. If you could just share a bit of your thoughts in response to our, our discussion questions. Sure. Um, they're all really good questions. Um, I think in, in terms of our process and how our commission is working is for the most part, we have designed a series of RFPs where people can apply for money that we're facilitating for the city to put art around town. Um, so far it's worked really well. I think the hardest part for us is getting the word out for the smaller grants. Um, I also think that what we're rethinking now is our initial micro grants were up to $1,500 and that financial compensation was a barrier. It wasn't enough money. And so we're rethinking about how we put the grants out and we're probably gonna do fewer grants for more money now that there, you know, we've done quite a bit of work. We, there are six projects around town that we're all really proud of. <laughs> so, um, good job. Um, so now that that was kind of our initial run because we're a new committee. Um, so it, we're rethinking how we're doing that. And definitely the financial piece of it is, is a way that we're rethinking how to attract different artists to do more work. Um, you know, in terms of our, like who's on our committee, you know, I think just like everybody, all the other committees, we could always use more members. Um, this kind of, the barriers are really time. Um, we're all at capacity in terms of the members on our committee. We're all kind of really hesitant to take on new projects or responsibilities because we're already all putting in quite a bit of time in our own different ways. Um, our committee is awesome. Everybody does a lot. Um, we're, you know, we're also thinking about meeting separately to do some brainstorming about how we can make art great for Montpelier. Um, so I think not having enough people is, is definitely a barrier. There are a lot of things. We have a lot of ideas there, you know, we're mostly artists on that committee. And so artists, are well known for having lots and lots of ideas. <laughs> so we have a lot of ideas. Um, and and um, yeah, I think in terms of the barriers, that's it. Our, our budget was reduced, which was a little bit of a bummer. 
um, now that we're kind of rolling and we have that big project going up on the Shaw's, we're going to do that big mural on Shaw's, which is super exciting. And a lot of the people that applied, we had 58 applications across the country for that. And um, a lot of people that applied put in projects and what their reimbursements were. And our reimbursement is a lot less than what people are going to get paid in other cities. So, you know, we still got a lot of Whatever we put up there is going to, the, the four, I will just say that the four people that we chose are really fantastic artists. So whoever gets it is, we're going to get something beautiful there. Um, but I think, you know, the financial piece of it is, is a barrier and we talk about fundraising and what that would look like, but then we kind of go back to our, our um, time commitments and, and that we're all feeling a little bit stretched and to engage in a, a fundraising campaign as a whole thing. You know, I'm trying to collect a lot of really good information about what we're doing and how we're doing it so that when the time comes, there's a lot of good substance there to present to people. Um, Cameron, did you have a question? And sorry, I can talk a lot. You can just turn me down if you need to. <laughs> Absolutely not. But I did have a question about um, the um, type of folks who are applying Mm -hmm. um, like the artists, is there diversity within the, the applications or the applicants that are applying for your grants? Do you think that changing um, the, the award amount will make a difference to that? I, you know, it's hard to say because the micro grants, I think because of the initial amount, we didn't get a lot of the initial RFP went out, we got 17 applications, which isn't a lot. And then it went around again, there was a second opening and we've only had maybe three or four applications. And so I think similar to you guys in terms of putting the word out that the money is available. And, you know, I started headhunting because I have a lot of <laughs> artist friends. I was like, there's money. Don't you want some of it? We're, we want to see art in town. And so I did. We're going to. Um, so this is super exciting. I'm sorry, I'm getting off track a little bit, but um, we're going to have an art installation in town in City Hall for two months, starting in May. And then the person who's doing that, we're putting on an art film festival in October. And so there will be film. We bought a projector with Montpelier Live. And so there will be a, a public art film display all over the city. I have no idea how that's going to work or where everything's going to go, but it's happening. Um, but in terms of diversity and pulling people in, um, you know, we could do better at that for sure. Uh, the, because the national search w was national, it wasn't singular to Vermont, we had a lot more diversity in the applications and two of the finalists are people of color. Um, so, so... You know, I, I don't know, I, you know, specific to the mural, it's a little bit different in Vermont because in terms of scale, we're a small city and Vermont doesn't have a lot of places to put murals. You know, we're saturated with artists. I mean, Vermont has lots and lots of wonderful artists, but in terms of opportunities for people to develop skills as mural painters, they don't have, there's not as much opportunity. So, um you know, we're thinking about it. We're thinking about how best to reach Vermont artists because the finalists are not from Vermont and that was a little bit contentious. I, I very was afraid to join in on a conversation that was happening on Facebook because people were really ju judgmental, critical of that. But um, when it came down to it, we thought we made the best decision. Um, but that said, we can now, you know, we're rethinking also in terms of reaching out because there were a lot of great Vermont artists that applied for the grants and we can actually reach out to them and specifically offer them an opportunity. Um, so, so that's exciting. Um, the most relevant issues, I would say, and that kind of blends into the second one is houselessness. Mm. Um, you know, that little corner there next to Shaw's is a really amazing opportunity for the city to create a public landscape where all people feel welcome. And the last I heard, the budget for that, the build out of that park got pushed off. Um, and 
it, I mean, really, it's a really fantastic, it's right in the middle of town. It, it, it's got enough space there. It's situated in a really good way. It's on the bike path. It's a really amazing opportunity. Um, and then seeing the shelter there and what happened to that, I think it was a really good thing for people to see what that looks like and what it's like. In, in larger cities, homelessness, houselessness is a major, it's really kind of on the forefront. And then what happens is people get pushed off into the fringes and then it's not seen and it's not dealt with. And now that those issues are kind of right front and center, you know, hopefully the, conver the conversation has turned. There's been a lot of dialogue publicly about what is that? What, why are those folks there? You know, why, why don't they leave? You know, there are all those conversations that people ask. And, and I think for the most part, majority people in the population don't understand houselessness. Um, and public art directly relates to how the city relates to itself. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's kind of an, it, it, public art can meet any of the topics because art is a voice for the unexpressible. So you know that that was the first one that came to my mind um you know we we got to do the black lives matter mural um and that i think is fantastic you know a beautiful mural done by people of color younger people of color um you know we're really open you know we i, I think a lot about accessibility we're, we're talking about putting signage on all of the public art around the city and you know, making sure that the signage is accessible so that anyone in a wheelchair can read the signage mm -hmm. and what that is like. Um, so, yeah, I think that's the, I think that's the crux of mm -hmm. where, where my perspective is. Yeah, thanks, Monica. You're welcome. Um, I, I like your last comment, though, about public art as a communication language, which can, you know, shine a light on or start a conversation about a whole range of topics, which includes equity issues. Mm -hmm. um, so just apart from your committee itself and the mechanics of it, um, the work that your committee does, there's a really interesting opportunity there to expand the conversation. So that, I, I appreciate that. Point yeah, really cool. you're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> does anyone have any um, thoughts or questions for Monica about um, what she shared. Michael. I just came across this quotation uh, uh, by Picasso, which addresses what you were saying, Monica. Art washes away from the soul the dust of everyday life. And I think that's much of what you were saying. And I think it's a great, you know, wonderful quotation. And I you know, want to sort of keep in mind about what what we can accomplish by promoting and uh, expanding the public art. Yeah, I, I think you saw that at the bottom of a drawing board receipt, did you? Because I, I was doing my taxes today and it was at the bottom <laughs> <laughs> of the receipts on the... Yes, it's, I guess it's getting around because not that's not where I, where oh. I saw it. <laughs> it, it was an article in the journal that I that I subscribe to but got it well I thought it was a major coincidence but that's great mm -hmm. yeah absolutely I mean we can we could be a voice for just about anything so um and we're doing our best to do that skillfully as we go <laughs> right. John uh, mute. you're muted John um I had one comment and that is I'd love to keep making distinctions between street art and tagging. The tagging is just whoa, out of hand now. And I have plenty of room for street art. I don't have a lot of room for tagging all the public spaces. Yeah, I think, you know, for, for that kind of thing, I think that it, it actually fits right into the conversation with we're, we're having. Because um, I, I, ta tagging is really a form of communication and it's a form of wanting to be seen and to yep. communicate and, so it's it's uh, we we've talked about that too, you know, in terms of we we coat all of our murals so that if they are tagged, they're washed easily. Um, you know, putting public art up does deter people from doing that kind of thing because again, it's a language and the, and there's communication there and it's 
building a, a part of the community that may otherwise be neglected or kind of be yep. written off. Um, you know, it's, it, it is a really interesting conversation to have. Like, yep. why, how, how do you deter people from tagging private property and why did they do it? I mean, I, I don't know. I've never been a tagger, so I can't really. <laughs> right. Yeah. Or can we provide an opportunity for them? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's it. I mean, it, it is. It's a really interesting, you know. It's the same thing with like skate parks. People used to get really mad about people skateboarding, and they, you know, they, and then you build a skate park, and it gives folks place to be. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's so there. There's got to be something in that. I'm gonna I'll make a note of that. I want to think about that a little bit more. <laughs> All right, I want to move us on to hear from Amy. Um, Please share your thoughts. Um, I think mostly the um, the Energy Advisory Committee has wrestled with this in terms of economic mm -hmm. um, justice. You know, we've we've talked a lot about how to how to reach apartment dwellers and how to make sure that you know, we can help them get off of fossil fuels when they have little control over their own, um, over what furnaces they're using. Mm -hmm. But there's also little incentive for, for landlords because they're not the ones paying for the oil. And so we, we've, we've struggled with that and that's so that's probably the you know the biggest the biggest piece of where we where we touch this um, you know we we've also had conversations with Peter Kellman about whether the energy ordinance the energy labeling ordinance is is just um, you know, he's, he's pretty convinced that it's going to hurt people who haven't had the money to weatherize their homes and make their homes less valuable. So, you know, we've had, we've had a lot of discussions on that front. Um, as far as our committee itself, we're fairly, fairly equitable with gender distribution, but um, you know, we are an all white committee and our, we tend to trend older. And part of that is because retired people have more time to do stuff. Um, although some of our most active members are also gainfully employed. Um, don't have a whole lot more to say. Mm -hmm. Are there, so it sounds like you mentioned a specific set of issues that have been coming up for the committee. Um, are there other things that you think in the future the committee might address um, other, other equity issues that is within the scope of the, the Energy Advisory Committee? And I apologize, I don't know much about the scope of your committee so it's hard for me to like target my question yeah um right now our committee is working on helping the city of montpelier meet its net zero goals hmm. and so we've done a, a ton of work with the wastewater treatment plant but you know that's not you know it doesn't have a whole lot of mm -hmm. equity issues involved with that um and working working with the city to uh, weatherize its buildings mm -hmm. and do fossil fuel switching. Um, you know, we did a lot of research into biodiesel and um, so, I mean, we work with, with the city a lot. So it, we're not we're not working with the population of the city. 
mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. much. We we do have a residential committee, and um, you know we we've been doing a project that does window inserts, storm window inserts, and that project specifically, um, we have a separate grant for and provide over half the inserts that we build are provided to low income households. How effective has that program been for you? Um, we, we are maxed out at our, at our capacity. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're able to build 250 inserts per community build and We've done that, but there's a lot, there's a lot of windows yeah. in Montpelier. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's great that we've, we've been able to work at full capacity, but it's kind of a drop in the bucket to the mm -hmm. new. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll just I just want to come up and say like I think anything that has to do with with people has to do with equity and so like I think the wastewater treatment work is so integral and you know it's just like such an expense for for folks and um yeah and I'm just been daydreaming about yeah how do we tell people more about that work that's happened I think you're saying like this like really a, a, a I'm almost seeing it the it as a knowledge core for the city and so of like how to bring in just daydreaming thinking about how to bring in um members you know or, uh, bring bring people who are not members into into learning more of and engaging in that work so um just wanted to reflect on that lauren thought. yeah yeah just one thing i wanted to note so you brought up amy the conversation that was sparked around um equity issues around the home energy labeling ordinance and like the social and economic justice committee brought that up and had a committee conversation about that and used like an equity rubric that we and so we had like looked at some different issues so just essentially like offering that to other committees, I think it's something that we, you know, would be interested in trying to like help committees think through issues. Like we fed that into city council. I'm like, I don't even know if we brought that to MIAC because it was happening kind of real time with city council conversations, I think around it, um, which is a, a lesson learned, make sure that that's actually getting back to the committees. Um, but um, but anyway, just, just for um, the committees here and if anyone is watching this later, it, I think, you know, being able to, um, there are tools to help like think through, you know, different populations that are impacted in different ways by policy decisions, by programs, projects, and like, you know, not having to be on your own trying to figure this stuff out, but using each other as resources um, to help think through implications for the city and the community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any other comments or questions? for Amy or anyone else really. Yeah, <clears throat> I had a couple of uh, questions. Right, have you thought or talked at all yet about uh, the Elks property? Are you addressing that to Amy or to CJAC? <laughs> Sorry, to Amy, uh, <laughs> in terms of housing and, uh, you know, um, opening it up there to uh, a, a wider group of people? Um, we have not had any discussions about the Elks property. Okay. I mean, clearly at this point, it's all just dreaming, but it's an important time to dream. Mm -hmm. The other thing would be um, more widely utilizing the uh, district heating system. That we have had a lot of discussions about. Okay. Um, and it kind of comes down to having a manager and a management system for the district heat. Um, I think there's a 
there hasn't been a whole lot of proactive work done in um, making the district heat project so that people can actually use it. Right. Um, it costs a lot to hook up to the system. Yep. yep. And that and that cost is borne up front by the um, person or business that hooks up to it. Yep. And so that's a huge barrier economically to anybody who wants to use the district heat. Um, like Unitarian Church wanted to hook up to the system, but it was going to cost hundreds of thousands of dollars to dig up the street and put the pipes in. Mm -hmm. Right. Even even though district heat like runs right past the church. Mm -hmm. um, so we've been talking about how how do we how do we find a way to finance it so that it can mm -hmm. be more widespread. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you. And I, I apologize. I, I kind of feel like I I don't have the knowledge base for my for my own committee because I'm not on the municipal subgroup, which no, does no, the no bulk worries. of the work that MEAC does. Yeah. No, this is really helpful to hear. Um, and the last point about the district heating system raises some equity issues in terms of who can access it, who can't, and if they could access it, what would that mean for energy costs, but also our carbon footprint? So it's yep. it's a really interesting point. Yeah, I just hope the conversation can continue, mm -hmm. you know, especially with a lot of uh, federal money floating around. Um, maybe there's an option there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, any final thoughts to share before we kind of move towards a closing. Thank you all for sharing and, and taking some time to, to think through our, our discussion questions. It was really interesting to hear your points of view. Uh, I think we're going back to, I don't know, Lauren, Michael, Shana, <laughs> Helen? Yeah, thank you, Jeremy. Yeah. So we had at 5.30, and I cannot believe that how time passes quickly when you have a very motivated group and um, to have a share mindset. So we talk about uh, our equity uh, survey uh, results. We share uh, them with you. And also we talk about um, our new project stipend and uh, why we want to do it. And we need to have a pre-survey uh, before July. So um, then we talk about um, what do you think about uh, equity issues uh, and what the relationship uh, with your committee uh, works. Uh, so next step uh, steps will be uh, taking the stipend survey, please. So you will have the link. Um, and also we want you to learn more about this meeting. So we prepared evaluation survey and uh, we will be very happy if you go uh, the link that I just share on the chat. And there are like four questions, very uh, short survey, but it will be very helpful for our committee when we organize uh, our next meeting. And it is always uh, very efficient and nice and useful for us to hear uh, your ideas and share our ideas with you. And if you wanna uh, reach out to us, you can always do it uh, through Cameron, Shayna, our chair, and also Lauren. We will be happy uh, to host you in our meetings or uh, in this kind of meetings in the future. So if you have any other closing thoughts we will be happy to hear if not i think it's time to say goodbye mm. okay thank you thank, thank you all so much yeah and, and I, the, the link is in the chat i'm just